Good morning. Welcome to worship. How is everybody doing this morning? Hope and pray you are doing well, whether you're with us here in the sanctuary or joining us online today. Uh, it's an exciting morning because we're starting out a new sermon series. We're going to be talking about prayer for the next eight weeks, and specifically, we're going to do that by taking a look at the Lord's Prayer. We're going to do a deep dive on that here in worship as we just kind of expound upon what does it mean when Jesus tells us to pray to our Father, and what does it mean when we say things like, hallowed be your name, can you really ask for God's will to be done and be okay with things like that? Well, we're going to get into all that over the next few weeks, uh, and it really is going to help us to see that when we pray and when we talk to God, that's going to be the thing that changes our lives and changes our attitude more than anything else in this world. So I'm excited to have us be a part of that uh, and to get started on this study. Let's go ahead and rise. Feel free to wave to the folks around you. Say hello to those who are joining us online this morning, too. And we will join and start our worship with our opening hymn. together this morning as we confess our sins to God, as we speak honestly to our Father, we do so first in a moment of silent personal confession. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we confess our times where we have not valued and seen the great relationship that we have with you. You aren't just our God, but your son Jesus has revealed to us that you are our Father. But far too often, Lord, we have settled for something far more distant, believed you were far away when you were close, believed that we couldn't access you by grace, but tried to do it on our own merits. We ask your forgiveness, Lord. Renew our hearts by your Holy Spirit that we may see the blessing of calling you our Father instead of something less. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The great news in the Gospel is that God our Father does come with forgiveness, with the opportunity for a new life, with eternity in Him, all because of the work of Jesus Christ on your behalf. 
because he came and died for you, because he rose from the dead. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for our hymn of praise. Our first reading this morning is going to come to us from the Old Testament book of Isaiah. Look down from heaven and see, from your holy and beautiful habitation. Where are your zeal and your might? The stirring of your inner parts and your compassion are held back from you. For you are our Father, though Abraham does not know us and Israel does not acknowledge us. You, O Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer from of old is your name. O Lord, why do you make us wander from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Your holy people held possession for a little while. Our adversaries have trampled down your sanctuary. We have become like those over whom you have never ruled, like those who are not called by your name. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down that the mountains might quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood, brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time. And shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. 
We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. This is the word of the Lord. Let us rise this morning for the words and deeds of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospel, the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, uh, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners. They may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us also our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let me invite you to be seated, and let's join together this morning for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we can call you our Father. We don't just have to call you God or Almighty or any of those titles that certainly are appropriate to you, Lord, but you have allowed us to call you something much closer to home, our Father. And as we meditate and ponder upon those words today, we ask that you would encourage and enrich our lives through them. Let the words of Jesus be the words that bring hope and peace, comfort and boldness into our lives today. Be with the one who dares to speak those words, that they would be from your Holy Spirit. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. What if there was one thing that could change your life and change even the course of the whole world? There really is one thing that can do all those things. Of course, we're talking about prayer. It's a great story about a woman who grew up in Eastern Europe under the old communist Soviet regime. All of her life was spent being told that there is no God, that you should not believe in God. You must be, not even that you should choose to be, that you must be an atheist. It was what was taught in school. It was what was said in the culture, in the society, everywhere you went. Everybody said, there is no God. However, when someone died and she would attend a funeral, the one time, the one time anybody was allowed to even say anything about God was at these funerals when they would recite the Lord's Prayer together. And this woman growing up, she had no idea what any of these words meant, but she did have an idea that there was something about them that was different than everything else she had experienced in her life. There was something about these words that always stuck with her. And when the day came, when that communist regime collapsed and the word of God began to spread and permeate that culture, she became a Christian and all of a sudden she realized that in those words, in the Lord's prayer, there was a light in the darkness. And she said that even in the dark, the tiniest light is seen everywhere. That's the power of talking to God power of the Lord's Prayer. Do you believe and embrace that word? Have you ever had those moments where, like her, maybe you did think God was either distant, far away, or maybe he just wasn't there at all? The scriptures are clear to us that prayer changes things. We've probably seen that bumper sticker a hundred times, but it really and truly does. Listen today 
to what the book of James tells us about our prayers. See if you have maybe thought this or believed this about yours. It says in James verse five, chapter 5, verse 16, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. That's not just a little quote there. I mean, this is how God wants us to believe and see our prayers, that it has great power as it is working. The book of Philippians adds on to that. In Philippians chapter 4, listen to these words. The Lord is at hand, and that's a critical part of this. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is here. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I love those words from Philippians, but i got to confess, sometimes I don't live by those words. Sometimes I haven't always seen that the Lord is at hand and believed and embraced that the Lord was at hand, or believed and embraced that you actually could have a peace that surpasses all understanding. Why? Because I didn't pray probably the way that God was wanting. Sometimes we let anything and everything cloud our judgment on that. But the Lord is at hand, right here with us, to encourage you this morning to speak to him and talk to him in prayer. And what better encouragement could we get today than hearing from Jesus himself, hearing the words, thinking about those words in the Lord's Prayer. How many of you think you've got that prayer memorized? You think you got it down pat? Uh, probably a lot of us do, right? I won't put anybody on the spot today to memorize those things. We've said it. Some of you have said it for decades, right? For years. I mean, maybe it's one of the first things you ever remember learning as a Christian. I know uh, for years in ministry, kind of teaching the Lord's Prayer to little preschoolers, a lot of times they don't remember that it's called the Lord's Prayer, but they remember it's called Our Father. They remember those first two words. And I want us to focus in just on that phrase this morning, our Father who art in heaven. That's going to be our starting point today, our Father who art in heaven. And before we even jump into the fact that we get to call God our Father, let's talk about that first word, our. Because sometimes we overlook that one, don't we? And sometimes maybe we jump what to what? My, right? But how does Jesus teach it to us? Our Father. A reminder what? That we're not just floating along in life on our own as an individual, but God has called us into this community, into the church, into this body of believers with all of our problems and sinfulness and all those things that we bring to the table. He has called us in to be his children. It's not just that it's my God, but it's our God. And I think there is a sense of confidence that we should get in saying that. And maybe sometimes we have sort of diminished that because we don't want to sound too self-righteous or anything like that. But let's just stop for a minute and say, hey, this is our God. That's a blessing in that, isn't it? That this is our God. That we're not strangers to him. We're strangers to one another. That there is no distance, but again, God allows us not just to address him in these holy titles, but actually gets to say that he is ours, and that we belong to him, and that he belongs to us by faith. This is our God. What a great thing that we get to say he belongs to us. He is in our lives. And that, yes, we're in it together. You know, the last seven months or so, people have been keep saying this phrase, we're in this together, right? And I don't know about you, but I have a hard time really believing and embracing those words, the way we all act and talk and speak with one another or talk with each other on the internet, right? But there's one time, one time where I believe it and think it's true. And it's in the body of believers. It's in those who are joined together in Jesus Christ. Then it is true. Then there is some substance with those words. It's not just a nice thought, but it's that here's our God who has brought us together and has forgiven our sins and made us his people and said it's going to be that way for all eternity. So absolutely, then I believe we're in it together. And we're in it with him. 
Because he's not just our God. What is he, Jesus said? Our Father. Our Father. Back in Jesus' time, no one spoke about God this way. No one ran around Jerusalem or Israel or anywhere in the world and addressed God as a father. If you were outside anything related to the Bible, you mean you would have never thought of any God or gods as your father. You thought of them as almighty beings. Some of you might remember them from like mythology or something like that that you learned in school. I mean, you just never thought that a God could possibly want to relate with you in that sort of way. But even those who had grown up with the Old Testament never thought about God that way. They talked about God like this, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that's a great thing, too. There's a lot of resurrection truth we could talk about in that phrase. But they never went so close as to say it's our father. And I think there's always kind of this temptation for us to diminish the relationship that we have with God. To make it less than what God wants it to be. Because let me tell you this morning, God wants the relationship that you have with him, this walking by faith in him, to be something that is as close or closer than your family relationships even are. And this is why he comes to you today and he says that he's your father. Can you remember any times in your life where maybe you had a great time with your father, or if your father wasn't so great, maybe just someone in your family and you connected on some really great level. I remember traveling back and forth to the seminary, moving out to St. Louis for the first time, and really and truly being away from home the first time. I made that trek uh, along the, the 40 and the, the old Route 66 uh, pathways with my dad. One of the best times we ever had. And one of the best times, because you just knew I'm making this huge life change and dad's coming along with me, kind of getting me set up, making things right. And it was great to have that with him. But imagine the fact that we can have that with God. That it's not just the people in our lives that God has uh, allowed us to have those connections with, but that he himself wants us to have that same connection with him. Do you believe that? And do you see it? I mean, this is why God forgives your sins. It's not just because, wow, that's such a relief for me. But it's because God does not want there to be any barriers for him either. He doesn't want that getting in the way anymore. This is why God gives us eternal life. It's not just because, wow, thank you, God, for letting me off the hook so I can get into heaven and not just die and be done or go to hell. It's because your father has a deep desire to want to live with you right now and for all eternity. That's his will and desire, too. Not just yours, but his, too. Because he's your father. Some of you might be sitting there today, though, saying, you know, that this is kind of a stumbling block. Not every dad is always good all the time, are they? And we probably have some stories and maybe some life experiences that unfortunately have diminished that sometimes. And maybe sometimes you hear, you know, God talked about with this term father and it brings all kinds of baggage with it. Jesus helps us to understand what kind of father God is. Forget for a moment what your father in the world might be. Maybe he was great. Maybe his sins showed a little more than they should have. Let's hear what Jesus says. If you want to understand what kind of father the Lord is, I invite you to take a look closely at the Gospel of Luke. There are all sorts of stories and parables and teaching from Jesus in the Gospel of Luke that really and truly outlines what kind of father we have. Forget what every other father might be. Listen to Jesus on the subject. Because when Jesus teaches us, these are the things he says about God, our father. And he starts by telling us that this father is radically gracious to you. Maybe some of you remember the story of the prodigal son that's contained in Luke's gospel. 
And you've got this dad who forgives this just completely rude and, and selfish son and brings him back into the family. And a lot of people would have heard that story in Jesus' day and thought, you know, I don't really like how that dad is in the story. And Jesus doesn't care because he says, this is how the father is. This is how the heavenly father is with you. That even if your worst of sins, he would draw you back in because he's radically, radically gracious. And he's even willing, he's even willing to be disgraced. Because of that, he's willing to have his son give his life on a cross. He's willing to take it on the chin, to have his name dragged through the mud because of you, because he wants you so much. But Jesus also paints a very clear picture that this same father is joyous. You know what Jesus tells us brings rejoicing to God? When a sinner repents. He paints the picture for us that our Heavenly Father rejoices, parties, however term you want to think about it, in heaven because you are right with him. That gets God excited. That makes God just thrilled beyond belief that you'd be right with him, that the relationship would be good. Jesus paints this joyous picture of God. He paints the picture that this God is sacrificial. And maybe you knew that. Maybe you knew that because you've seen the cross. You know the lengths that Jesus went to for you. And this Father is forgiving. This Father is forgiving. Maybe you've had a few times in your life when you've been at it with your parents or with your dad. And maybe it didn't seem like that relationship got restored very well or that there was a whole lot of forgiveness going on. But when you come to your Heavenly Father, you can be absolutely 100% certain that your sins are forgiven. There are no doubts about it. There's no wondering. There's no hopefully. There's no bargaining that has to go on. It's not like when you're a kid and your parents catch you doing something and they say, well, I will try to do better next time or what can I do for you to make it right? God says it's already been done. Your father says it's already been done through my son, Jesus Christ. This is the picture Jesus paints. I don't know what your dad was like, but I can tell you what your heavenly father is like. He's that sacrificial, loving, Radically gracious Father for you. Will that change the way that you pray? See, it should. It should change the way we pray, because now is the time for us to jump over the barriers that have been holding us back in talking to God. It's time to jump over those barriers where maybe you thought you couldn't speak to your Father in heaven. Oh, I shouldn't talk about this, or I shouldn't go there. It's time to go there with him. If you remember our psalm series that we just wrapped up, we saw how honest you can be with God. And so it's time for you to go and be honest with your Father in heaven too. Maybe that means confessing your sins, or maybe it just means talking about the real problems going on in your life instead of trying to sugarcoat everything with your Father. Because again, it's your Father. It's not a stranger. It's not somebody who doesn't know you. It's your Father. Jump over those barriers. Don't let them get in the way anymore. Spend some time just talking with God. You ever done that before? You ever done that before where you just talked to God about life? And you didn't get into all the formalities with him and you didn't sort of wait for a good excuse. You just shared with your father what life was like. If you haven't done that yet, do it. You will be so glad. So blessed that you just spent that time talking to your father. Jump over those barriers. Remember that it's our. Remember that it's our father. We're going to have a challenge in the year 2021 here at Faith. That we're going to try to increase the amount of times that we pray with someone. Not just for someone, with someone. Have you prayed with someone lately? 
You ever been blessed to have had somebody pray with you before? It's a great thing, isn't it? If you're sitting there today or if you're online with us today and you've never had someone pray with you, then you seek me out today and we will do that. We'll pray together. Call us up on the phone. We'll pray together. But if you've never done it on the other side of that, if you've never taken the time to actually pray with someone, maybe you've never taken time to pray with your kids, or maybe you've never taken time to pray with your spouse, or maybe you've never taken time to pray with a family member, do that. This is our Father. Jesus didn't accidentally say that. He said it's because of the truth. This is our Father. This is the one relationship, this is the one place in the world that we can honestly say we're in it together and it's not a joke and it's not a cliche, but it's true. We're in it together, why? Because we're in it with the Father. We're in it with our Father, not somebody else's Father, not just Jesus' Father, your Father your heavenly Father. Let's take the time today to go to him now in prayer. Heavenly Father, you are our Father. Let us not forget that. Let us rejoice today that you are our Father in heaven. You are different than all other fathers. Radically gracious, loving, forgiving, sacrificial, giving everything for us. Let us not have any more barriers in talking and speaking to you, Lord. Let us just lay it all out before you and do that together. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Our worship's going to continue this morning as we worship the Lord in our offerings. You're welcome, if you're here with us in worship, to go to the back and do that if you'd like, or to do so online with us as well. It's a great time, too, just for us to reflect on our Father and the songs today and the goodness he brings to us. Let's worship together.
Let's lift up our voices together as we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning we lift up into prayer uh, all of our needs and concerns. We pray for uh, Margaret Ogala's mom, Swaba. Uh, she was just diagnosed with COVID-19, and so we pray God will bring uh, healing upon her. Uh, we continue to lift up uh, Matthew Toon, who is also still battling um, COVID-19, and uh, just pray for him, pray for the family of his mom, Christine, who did uh, pass away recently from that. Uh, so we just ask God's help upon them. We do lift up our president and leaders who uh, as well are battling that illness and pray for their healing. Pray too for uh, Judy Minnick and her recovery, Jennifer Totten, Ed Jaswa, Scott McFarland, uh, and their battles with cancer as well as Hazel. We continue to pray for Brad Keen, uh, that God would just uh, continue to strengthen him. He's now moved to a new care facility uh, that should be able to uh, really help him get back up on his feet and strengthen him. Let's pray for him and Kelly during this time. Pray, too, for uh, peace and comfort to the family of Bill Cook. Uh, Bill was called home to heaven back in March, uh, but coming up on Friday, October 16th, there will be a graveside service for him at Eternal Hills. Uh, so we lift up his family and friends uh, to the Lord today. And uh, we give thanksgiving and praise to our God as well. Uh, we pray in thanksgiving for the birthdays coming up with Bob Grant, A.J. Noel, Chris Dregmiller, Pat Clark, Chad Mazenbacher, Bob Hodgkinson, Pat Rayberger, Diane Falstick, uh, Paul and Carolyn Keene as well. So we pray uh, and praise and thanksgiving to God today. Let's do so now. Heavenly Father, we again come to you with that invitation to place all of our burdens on you, to remember the words of Philippians chapter 4 that say, You are at hand, Lord. You are right here in our midst. And so we pray, Lord, knowing this, praying and speaking to you that you would give us graciously that peace that surpasses all human understanding, that you would, in fact, Lord, guard and keep our hearts and minds during these times. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we pray for those who are suffering in any way, who are sick, injured, depressed, lonely, all the struggles, all the worries that can go on in life, Lord, you are aware of them all. And so we pray that you would help and intervene in those situations. We pray, Lord, for those who are battling with the coronavirus right now. We think of Margaret's mom, Swaba. Pray that you would bring healing upon her. We pray for Matthew as he continues to get stronger and at the same time is mourning the death of his mom at the same time. We pray that you would comfort him and give him peace. We pray for the president that you should bring healing to him as well as the first lady and many others, Lord, who are infected. We pray that you'd bring healing upon them and that you might uh, bring an end to cure to this, Lord, that you watch over those working on vaccines and treatments, give them knowledge, give them wisdom, Lord. Uh, just help our leaders to make the right decisions in accordance with it too, Lord. Uh, and just be with doctors and nurses and others, Lord, uh, that you would give them patience and help uh, during these times. We pray for those who are suffering with many other things, Lord. We pray for Jerry Hudson, who's battling cancer. You would help and heal him, Lord. We pray for Ed Jaswa, for Jennifer Totten, for Scott McFarland, for Hazel. Give them your healing as well. We pray for Matt, uh, who has kidney failures. We pray for uh, Kara Linda, still going through many uh, health issues of her own. Uh, and we pray, Lord, for any other things in our hearts and minds this day. Pray for your comfort and peace to the family of Bill Cook, uh, who will be laying him to rest, Lord, in anticipation of the resurrection. We pray, Lord, that you would give them your peace at this time. We take a moment to silently bring before you our other needs and concerns.
Lord, in your mercy. Father, we do respond to you in thanksgiving and praise because you are a gracious God who loves us and forgives us and draws near to us. And so we bring our thanks and praise for that, Lord. We thank you for that peace you give to us. We thank you that we can confidently say that you are at hand. We thank you, Lord, and those celebrating this week as we think of Paul and Carolyn, Diane, Pat, Bob, uh, Chad, Chris, Bob, AJ, and Pat, that you bless their week, Lord, as they give thanks for the gift of life that you have imparted to them. We thank you, Father, for the numerous blessings that you give into our lives every day, for daily bread, uh, for the family members, friends who surround us, Lord, who are in our lives. We silently come before you in this moment with thanks and praise. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we do lift up our nation in these times, Lord, as we have seen so many turbulent things in the last months. We pray that you would intervene, Lord. We pray again for your wisdom to leaders in every facet of their leadership, that you would give them your guidance. We pray for our nation during this election time, for your will to be done, that we as your church would be raised up to be people who speak the truth in love that uh, we consider that in the way that we interact with other people, Lord, so that they might see your works, Lord, and give glory to you during these times and know others. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let me invite you at this time to take your communion cups today. Uh, just in case you didn't receive one yet, they are uh, out there as you came in this morning. We're going to hear the word of God on this precious gift that he has given to us today, this gift of the Lord's Supper. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the very blood of Christ shed for you. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you in the true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and be filled with joy. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a joy it is to know here in this sacrament that once again you are present and here in our lives as our Father. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins that has been brought to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, and again communicated to us here in this meal. Let us walk daily as your children, loved by you, our Father. Let us never be ashamed to call you that. Let us be bold in sharing it. The world might know it too. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's lift up our voices to the Lord this morning as we sing our closing hymn. <laughs> Thank you. 
we're thankful to have you with us in worship today here in person online too just a couple announcements for you we're going to have bible study starting at 9 15. we're going to talk more about what it means to call god our father we're going to dig into a little bit why does jesus uh, speak the words of the lord's prayer in matthew's gospel and luke's gospel at the time that he does if we backtrack a few verses we get even more that jesus can teach and show us today so join us at 9 15 uh, either here in the sanctuary or live on facebook and we'll get into even more uh, from god's word that can encourage and enrich our prayer lives today uh, just a couple things that are coming up this week on wednesday at noon we've got drive through communion uh, so if you are staying home these days but want an opportunity to commune wednesday at noon is your time if you just want another opportunity uh, to gather in the Lord's Supper, by all means, we're out there. Uh, drive on up, and we will have communion together. So again, that's going to be coming up uh, Wednesday at noon. Uh, we're going to have uh, a youth group opportunity, too, coming up on October 10th for anyone kinder through fifth grade. It's going to be outdoors, uh, social distance, all that kind of safe stuff uh, trying to do, but just an opportunity, too, for us to connect with our young people and to give them uh, something to bring the Word of God into their lives. So we do ask that people would RSVP by the 7th so we can get an idea uh, of head count for that. So that is coming up as well. We want to continue to thank those who brought uh, plastic bags uh, for the use in the food distribution too. I know uh, plastic bags can kind of be worth their weight in gold these days, literally, since there is a charge on those things these days. But thank you to those who have uh, donated them and brought those out. We really do appreciate that. Food distribution is going to be coming up again uh, this coming Friday. Uh, and so, as always, Pastor Martin loves uh, to have folks volunteer, help out with that. So, uh, if you feel the Lord uh, pushing and pulling you that way, uh, he'd love to have you help out with that as well. Pray this morning, no matter what, uh, that you would go in the peace of God. It's good to see you today. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 